Guys, I am super excited because today I want to talk about one of my favorite languages, a language I like to call Bislama. And I call it Bislama for a very important reason, because it's the name of the language. I'm going to go over three things in this video. Number one, a very brief introduction of what Bislama is and why I think it's awesome. Two, why I think you should study Bislama. And three, where you can get started if I've convinced you with number one and number two. Alright, let's get started. So most people haven't heard of Bislama. It only has 10,000 native speakers and only about 200,000 people speak it as a second language. I was first introduced to Bislama by this guy on the left here in this photograph. His name is Elder Bruce and he came from the island nation of Vanuatu, somewhere in between Fiji and Australia and the South Pacific. Because I'm a language nerd, I like to say hello to people on their native languages. So I went online and to see what I can learn about the language of Vanuatu. And boy was I surprised, because there's not just one. Vanuatu has 113 different languages. And for a nation of about 300,000 people, that makes Vanuatu the most language dense country on the planet. So I'm already nerding out about this fact. And then I get to the Slama, the language that is most widely spoken in Vanuatu. So Bislama started out as sort of a pidgin English. So in the mid-1600s, unfortunately, a lot of local islanders were kidnapped or persuaded through deception away from their islands and taken to work on plantations in places like Australia. Uh, they couldn't communicate with each other because there's people from all over and they spoke lots of different languages. So a uh, kind of a pidgin English developed where they took lots of words from English and they strung them together using grammar from their local islands. Years later, near the end of the 1800s, a lot of these men were able to go back home to their native islands and they brought this Pidgin English back with them. About 95% of the words in the Slama have an English language origin, but all the grammar is oceanic, which to me makes this a really fun language to explore as a native English speaker. So a little side note, I do hear people call the Slama Pidgin language and that's how it started out. Pidgin language is usually a simplified language, sometimes combining multiple languages together to facilitate communication. And that's how Bislama started out, but Bislama is now a Creole language. And there are three distinguishing features of a Creole language that makes it different than a Pidgin language. So a Creole language has a consistent, predictable grammar. A Creole language has a stable vocabulary. And a Creole language has native speakers. It has children that grew up learning this language as their native language. And since Baslama has all three of these, it's grown up. It's no longer a pidgin language, it's now a Creole. So even though most of the words in Baslama came from English, not all the words are instantly recognizable as having English origin, especially since most of them are spelled differently than they are in standard English. Take for example the word that I have on the screen right now. Um, some of you may be able to guess what it means, and some of you are probably still clueless. But when I add a few other words at the end of it, and you can see that it spells my home country, United States of America, you can probably guess what, what it means. This Islam is full of these words and phrases that just take a couple seconds for a native English speaker to figure out. And sometimes just for fun, I will go and I'll uh, find something to read in Bislama just to see how much I can understand. The Slama also has some really fun uh, descriptive phrases to describe something. One of my favorites is uh, Prince Philip, the man who was married to Queen Elizabeth II. In the Slama, his, he is referred to as Man Blancas' as Queen. I found a TEDx talk online that describes even more of these Baslama phrases, and I'll link to it below in the description. One of my favorite things about Baslama is how to say the personal pronoun we. And it all depends on how many people you're speaking about and whether or not you're including the person that you're speaking directly to. So, if I'm talking about me and you, I can say, you, me, too. If I'm talking about me and you and one other person, I can say, you, me, too. Or if I'm talking about me and you and multiple other people, I just say, you, me. If I'm talking about me, one other person, but not you, it's me too, Fala. If I'm talking about me, two other people, but not you, it's me three, Fala. 
and I'm talking about me and a whole bunch of other people, but not you, it's me, Father. The national song of Vanuatu is Yumi, 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 and I think you could probably figure out what that means. So, I have five reasons why I think you should study Bislama. And I don't necessarily think you need to study it well enough to become fluent in it, but studying it will help you build your language learning muscles. So reason number one, uh, Bislama gives you the opportunity to learn a language that has a grammar that is different than English without getting bogged down in difficult to learn vocabulary. So when you learn a new language, not only are you learning new words, but you're learning a new way of stringing those words together. And if you're going to study Bislama, you have the opportunity to build those grammar muscles or, or be able to think in a way that's different than how you structure English without having to learn really difficult words. Most of the words are derived from English, so they're going to be really easy to learn. The second reason why I think you should study Bislama is because it helps you practice the art of figuring out things from context. For example, in the example I used earlier, we saw the word state, S-T-E-T. -E if you saw that all by itself, you might not be able to figure out what it means. However, when you see it together as part of the United States Belong America, um, it becomes a little bit more obvious what state means. The third reason why I think you should study Bislama is it helps you practice the art of seeing patterns. Being able to see patterns is a crucial skill if you want to be good at learning languages. And the better and more quickly you can learn how to see patterns, the better and more quickly you are going to be able to learn languages. So let's think about some of the examples that I shared today in Bislama. United States Belong America and Man Belong Mrs. Queen both have the word belong. And you may or may not notice that belong is a short word of the English word belong. And it can be translated as of or can show possession. Another uh, thing you can see in that ex in the example of the United States of America, you can see state doesn't have an S at the end. So obviously, Bislama has a different way of forming the plural than it does in English. So that's something that you look forward to learn. The fourth reason that I think you should learn Bislama is the fact that there are so few resources to learn Bislama. And I'll explain what I mean. So if you wanted to learn French, you're going to find apps and uh, websites dedicated to learning French and YouTube channels dedicated to teaching you French. And you can find classes and podcasts. There are tons of resources out there for learning French. However, for Bislama, there's hardly anything at all. So it helps you develop the skill of figuring out things for yourself. So it's strengthening those mental muscles. You're not going to be able to rely on a Basama language course, most likely. Um, so you're going to be able to figure out things for yourself and become a better language learner that way. So reason number five for studying Basama, it's a fun language. Uh, several times a year, I will get something out to read in Basama. And I'm definitely much better understanding what I read than what I hear in spoken Bislama. And uh, I'll just have fun. If you wanted to get started in Bislama, uh, the very first thing that I would do before you go and learn about grammar or sentence structure is I would go to the Bislama version of Wikipedia just to get a taste of the language. Uh, there are not very many articles there. There's about 1,200 articles, which is a whole lot less than Wikipedia's other languages. And most of the articles are actually pretty short. Uh, for example, the article about volcanoes, it says in its entirety, Volcano y Big Fala il Long Lava. But then if you wanted to read like one of the really long articles, like I think the article in the United States has like at least three paragraphs, maybe four. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna read it. You're not gonna understand everything, but you're gonna understand more than 50%. And what's going to happen then is you're going to feel like you are a language learning super genius because you learned all that stuff. You can understand all that stuff in a language you've never seen before. And it's going to get you hooked. And you're going to want to learn more. It's going to make you want to click on the number one page to read more of Islama. Uh, the next thing I would check out is the English language Wikipedia's page about the Islama language. Uh, it'll explain some of the basics of the Islama grammar and then also there's a website called baslama.org that uh, does teach a little bit more baslama, has some readings in baslama with some audio files. 
And their translate page, I don't know why they call it the translate page, it's just like an interactive dictionary where you can type in a word in the Slama, you can see the English word in there, or vice versa. It's not a great tool, but it's probably the best tool that I've found so far for looking up words in, in the Slama. I also wrote a blog article about the Bislama language about six years ago, back when I used to blog semi-regularly and I didn't have as much uh, gray hairs in my beard. Um, at the bottom of that article, I have a video that I found of, uh, if you want to hear what a, a native Bislama speaker sounds like, um, it's a fun video to watch. You're not going to understand everything, but you're going to understand a lot, and it does have English subtitles. Um, so go ahead and check that one out. All the resources that I've just mentioned have links below in the video description. However, before you go start clicking on links, if you like today's video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button anyway, because you're probably a grumpy person and grumpy people deserve to watch videos that they don't like. Anyway, I'll have another video next week. Until then, thank you too much. Tata, mo lukam you back again.